Seth, why why are you so convinced that there isn't a God? If, well, if I mean, that's which God do you think I would be is most convincing? Like, mm. you obviously want to lean me in a certain direction. Which God are you talking about? question is why you're why are you so convinced there's not a god or any concept of god but as i've been listening to your show tonight i actually have a a lot more questions although i'm not sure we'll have time to get to all of them yeah probably probably won't we'll we'll try to tackle this one as best we can though um seth why why are you so convinced that there isn't a god if, well, if i mean that's which god do you think i would be is most convincing like mm -hmm. you obviously want to lean me in a certain direction which god are you talking about Welcome back and Happy New Year to everyone. Glad that we're here. So which God are you talking about? I guess it's a fair question. But if someone were to say, I'll give you a million dollars if you guess, just guess which God I'm talking about. But you have to be right on your first guess. One guess. I wonder which God he would talk about. Which God would he mention? I wonder. God is. <laughs> I don't think any of us could tr can truly know what God is until we experience it. Um, you, but you, you know, you and I have so I much like. in common. Yeah, yeah, Harvey. right, right. You yeah. and I have I so much so. in common, yeah. right? I'm not convinced. I haven't really seen anything. If you find something out that's testable, call me mm -hmm. and we'll talk. You and I have that in common. And until somebody makes a demonstrable proof of a God, well, then you and I are kind of in the same boat. There's no good reason to believe it. Therefore, we are non-believers in gods. I think you might be an atheist. You know, there are people who have made deals with the devil, the same devil that we read of in the scripture, in the Bible, the same Bible that people try to discredit and say, where else is it found besides the Bible? But there are people who have made deals with the devil that we find in the Bible. There are people who speak to the devil face to face. And um, they know that he is real. They know that he is real. And sometimes I think about how they look at people who say there is no God. They probably look at them with a puzzled look. Like, listen, at least <laughs> the devil pays us to do his dirty work, but are you getting paid for this? Are you getting paid? Is he paying you for this or are you doing this for free? Because we sold our souls, he's paying us, but you're doing his work. Are you getting paid too? I don't know. Listen, I don't know. But I'm just saying, there are people who know that Satan is real. And they know that God is real too. Because Satan tells them lies about God. So they also know that God is real. I, I, I wonder how they view people who say there is no God. It, it really it, it makes me wonder sometimes when they look at people who say there is no God. What? What is going through their minds as they see people say there is no God and we don't have sufficient proof for a God, the God in the Bible in particular, not just any God, because the other gods, there are many idols. You can, I mean, what's an idol? It's something that a man created, but the God that was not created by man, we don't have any proof for him. Sorry. Come back when you have more proof. Okay. Yeah. Come back when you have more proof. I mean, come on. You said it, Harvey. You said, hey, look, you know, people talk about this thing and nobody really kind of knows what it is and we don't really have good explanation and stuff. And it's like, yeah, 
yeah, just stop right there, brother. Like I'm, I'm right with you. You know, if, if we looked at, if we looked at anything else in existence from that perspective, it'd be like, yeah, I don't, I'm not convinced by that. And it's like, well, why? It's like, well, we've, we've got no, we've got no reason to, you, you know, you just said, nobody really seems to know what the descriptions are for it. Even if we don't, if we can't even define it accurately, how can we then take the next step to say, we believe it, we accept that it exists. And even more so, how do we then from there say, here's the things that it actually wants us to do. So. So it says that nobody seems to know the description for this God. Nobody seems to know the description for it. I assume he's not talking about the God of the Bible because the God of the Bible is not an it. He has made himself known as he. So I don't know, maybe, like, I don't know what to make of it. If you're talking about the God of the Bible, he does make himself known in his word. First John 1, 5, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. Exodus 15, 11, who is like unto you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome, in glorious deeds doing wonders. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.17, the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God. Isaiah 40, 20, God is everlasting, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. John 4, 24, he is a spirit. Psalm 18, 30, his word is flawless and his way is perfect. You know, his word declares in Philippians 2, 10 to 11 that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So what's ironic is that after you've spent your whole life saying that there's not enough proof for God, it's the same God that you would bow before and declare that he is Lord. You see, no man can fight God and win. You cannot fight God and win, not even the devil as powerful as he thinks he is. I mean, the power he has was given to him. He's a created being. But not even he can fight God and win. We already know how this battle ends because the Most High has told us in his word how this battle will end. If spiritual beings who are more powerful than man cannot fight God and win. Why does man believe that he can fight God and win? Every knee and every tongue, even those who spend their lives saying, well, not enough proof, not enough proof. Like you cannot tell me that God just is love because then what you're saying is like, two weeks ago when my neighbor got a bunny rabbit and I pet the bunny rabbit for the first time, I was like, oh my gosh, I love you. You're so fluffy. Like I could have said, oh my God, I got you. And that doesn't make any sense. We know that those two concepts are different and that's why we have different terminologies for them. So if, if that's all we're doing at the end of the day with our conception of God, then again, I just say that that fails. You cannot tell me God is love. Hmm. And then he gives an example of a sentence where you use the word love and say, well, then you won't be able to replace the word God with the word love in this sentence because it just doesn't make sense. Okay, so if I have a stick, okay, I have a stick. Can I not say, I'm going to stick my finger in the pie? Would that mean that I'm, okay, that's confusing. Uh, how could I stick my finger in the pie? And that is a, if this is a stick, hmm. If this is a fool, how can I say, um, he is going to fool you? But if this is a fool, how can you fool? fool me this is a fool so 
You see, because in language, we understand that they are nouns, they're abstract nouns, and they're verbs. So we, we can clearly differentiate when we use something as a noun, an abstract noun, or a verb. And there is absolutely no confusion. So how could you now think that there could be any sort of confusion when you use the word love as a verb or when love is referred to when God himself is love? Where is the confusion? Where is the confusion? We, we tend to create our own confusion when there is really none. There's absolutely no confusion, but hey, just for the sake of it, let's just create some form of confusion and throw that out there. Because there are many people who would just jump on that bandwagon. They wouldn't think. Many people, their thoughts are so controlled by what someone else says. They don't go and think. They don't go and search. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that doesn't make sense. But did you think about it? Did you think about how many words you use in similar ways, but you know that one does not mean the other based on its context, based on whether it's used as a noun or a verb? As a, just as a clarity, just as clarifying here, Harvey, I don't say that that all conceptions of God are are not true, right? I, I don't take that stance. I, I take the stance that every conception I have ever come across fails in some way. It, it I, I am absolutely still leaving open the possibility for the black swan. I have not I have not ruled out black swans as being possible, right? All I've simply said is currently all of the swans we've seen are white, 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 and white. And so most likely any other swan that we come across is going to, to follow that pattern. And that's just the same with the concepts of God. So yeah, sure, there could be a concept of God out there that I just haven't come across that is 100% uh, logically uh, uh, valid, you know, uh, and sound. But uh, I haven't seen it. All conceptions of God, all have failed. And so far since he's never seen a black swan, there's probably no black swans. And what he ties that to is that probably there's probably no concept of God that can pass the God test from all I've heard so far. And probably any that I might hear in the future, there's probably none that's going to pass that God test. But then he has no concept of God. Like yeah, but that's a, but then, fine. but then you have to, but then you kind of have to go back to your question of why aren't you convinced that it's like, well, because I literally don't have a concept. So it all boils down to the question, what are you looking for? When will you know? Because if you don't know, how will you know that it has not passed you by? I have paired these videos with the testimonies of a former devil worshiper. Because I want people to understand that this is not about what you think or how you feel. There is a spiritual battle going on for your soul and it does not care whether you believe. In fact, it's delighted when you say, oh no, there is nothing wrong. There is no battle going on for my soul. I'm fine. There's no God, there's no proof. Until you come up with your proof, nothing doing. Mm -mm. I reject that. The battle for your soul does not care what you think, how you feel, what you believe, what you don't believe. See, the problem that every single atheist has is that one day your body will separate from your soul. I said it before and I'll say it again. If we could just continue with all of these debates and arguments for eternity. 
that would make a very big difference. But when you have an appointment with death, you need to be sure that the stance you take is not going to get you in any hot waters. You need to be sure. Because these debates and arguments and opinions have an expiry date. And the Most High is not mocked. He said every knee and every tongue. Let's see who is going to win this battle. Man or God? Yeah, let's see who's going to win. We don't have to wait to see, but I'm just throwing that out there as a warning. You don't fight. You don't pick up. You don't pick a battle with the creator of all things. You don't pick a battle with the creator and the giver of life. You do not pick a battle with him. I pray for every soul that is far from God, that is neglecting or rejecting God because he does not delight in the death of a sinner and neither should anyone. Because it's a horrible, horrible thing. The moment of death for someone who dies without that covering of that blood of Jesus on them, it's a horrible, horrible moment. It really is. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time.